Now, let's go back a little way in time. 33 states now make up the Union. No, over 30 million people, but the North and South are quite different. In the North, you find a population that's white and totals 22 million inhabitants. In the South, there are 9 million, of whom 4 million are black and, for the most part, slaves. Say, Tom, have you seen Nat? We looked every place, Tom. You know where he is? No, no, Master. I haven't seen him all this day. One more trying to escape, but we'll find him. I guarantee that. Mm. It's for sure he tried to swim away. His tracks end here. Could be drowned. A thousand dollars he was worth. He was young and good health. If he left, I swear I'll get him back. Thank you, Lord. Now I bet I'd get on up north to Pennsylvania and freedom. Yes, and I tell you that the institution of slavery is evil in itself, for black people have rights as well. Our Constitution guarantees liberty and justice for all. I should like to remind Mr. Lincoln that in each state, it is the people there who are to decide whether slavery should be abolished or not. In half of the states of the Union, the citizens have so chosen. Well, perhaps Mr. Lincoln would rather see our state to secede from the Union and become an independent country? What's wrong? Now, looking at you, I see you're not well. Are you up from the south? Uh-huh. Well, I'll bet you're hungry. Uh -huh. Why don't you come along? I'll give you something to eat, huh? Well, I'll try to find some clothes for you, and if you want, you can do some chores around the house to pay me back. Oh, I will. What's your name? Nathaniel Black, but they call me Nat. I'm from Virginia. My name's Ben, Benjamin White. Here, there's no slavery. You're a free man, Nat. My friends, this is Nat Black from Virginia. He's gonna work with us. Hello, Nat. Well, you're welcome here. My name is Jim. Hey, look here, Jed. Are you deaf or what? You can welcome Nat Black? A Negro, and what's more, an escaped slave. It's pretty sure we'll have problems. This is a free uh, country. Besides, Nat's a man, same as you and me, so my friend, even if you're not pleased... Right, okay, okay, my name's Jed. I only hope that you're not as lazy as some of you folks. Because here we work. If you don't want me here, I can always go away. Good idea, Nat. Be on your way right now. No, you'd better go, Jed. Okay, he can stay, so what? There must be something left to eat. Come on, Nat. You're looking for an escaped slave, right? Yeah. I know where you'll find one. This one calls himself Nat. Nat, a big guy around 20? Yeah, where is he? In that house. What do you gentlemen want? This is my home. What do you want? I'm here to bring back my slave. Here's my ownership deed. According to our laws, I have a right to take him back. Ooh. Here's what I do to your ownership deed. Huh? <laughs> We're in the state of Pennsylvania. This is an anti-slave state. Now get out of my house. I don't go without this Negro. He's mine. I want him back. <laughs> 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 no, 
November 6, 1860, Abraham Lincoln became president of the United States. The house divided against itself cannot long endure. I want the union to be preserved. I do not want the house to fall, but I do not wish it to be so divided between slaveholder and abolitionist. The first to secede was South Carolina. A few weeks later, all the other slave states followed, except for Kentucky, Missouri, and Maryland. General Beauregard, the garrison at Fort Sumter, refuses to capitulate. Quite regrettable. In that case, we open fire tonight. Captain James General Beauregard has ordered firing. Lieutenant Pryor, commence firing. Begging your permission, Captain, I... I would rather not be the one to fire the first shot in this war of brother against brother. I understand. I shall open fire. Gentlemen, to meet this civil insurrection, we will call to the colors 75,000 volunteers and impose a naval blockade on all southern ports. Nat, it's war, a civil war, but our cause is just, and I've decided to enlist. Then I will enlist, too. I will fight to defend our liberty. Sure, that one there, I don't have to see his uniform to know what side he's on. Lieutenant Jones, we shall try a tactic. If it works, it is going to revolutionize naval warfare. Yeah. But, 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 but what if you should fail, Captain Buchanan? Then we shall all be dead. Forward all to the command, Lieutenant! Terrible weapon, Mr. President. Cannonballs didn't even scratch it. It will surely go up the Potomac and attempt to bombard the White House. And so far, Mr. Secretary of War, I can't see nothing at all. In any case, we're ready to return fire. Plating held, but our cannon aren't powerful enough. We'll have to see about that, Lieutenant. True, our armor plating held, but our cannon aren't powerful enough. We'll have to see to that, Lieutenant. Hmm. Hmm. The first naval battle with metal ships.
The Monitor and the Merrimack. Progress. Well, and who won the day? Yeah, that day, nobody did. And so the war went on and on and on. We have to take the high ground. It is absolutely essential to our plans, gentlemen. At As your orders, General Grant. Grant. There's the hill, all right. It's well guarded. Sergeant Nat, your company will circle around, come from their rear when we start attacking. Is that clear? Yes, sir. No, I don't believe it. You see that? It's the Negro slave commanding us now. Oh, somebody hold me back. What would you do? It's because he's a brave soldier he was promoted. He can't help it if you shake in your boots. to be outstanding acts of bravery by many, and enormous losses on both sides. The battles would be lost and won. It's the same Negro. I'll get him, I swear I will. commanded the southern forces, and he could weld men into good soldiers who would go through fire for him. But well, Lee, uh, who was a man of outstanding qualities, couldn't succeed despite his valorous troops. No, they, they were just too far outnumbered. And in the end, he had to surrender. Your officers may retain their weapons and all men keep their horses. President Lincoln wants all combatants to return to their homes and work, so the country will recover and remain unified. So be it, General Grant. I accept your conditions in the name of the Confederate Army. And the fratricidal war ended. Yeah, there were 600,000 dead, 400,000 wounded. Oh, yes. And but shortly thereafter, a certain John Wilkes Booth I'll get him. No! Oh. Nobody around to do the work? That's right. Now the slaves are all free. And they don't owe us anything now. They're free to do as they like. You believe that, do you? We'll see about that. Friends, we have established a secret society. We call it the Ku Klux Klan. We must preserve the superiority of the white race. Each of us is dedicated to the struggle. But first, we will swear our allegiance to our cause. I, the Great Sage, swear. I, the Grand Dragon, swear. I, the Great Titan, swear. I, the Great Wizard, swear. I, the Great Sentinel, swear. <laughs> Protect us, we have done nothing wrong. You're all dirty Negroes. Before long, you move into our places. 
You'll even try to send your brats to all white schools. Never! You hear? Never, never, never! Oh, you believe you're stronger because there are more of you than us? You think you're better because your skin is white? That's right! Oh. Yeah. But we are now free men, and we will fight for our freedom and our rights! Oh. Did you hear that? How dare that Negro talk to us like that high and mighty? We better teach him how to talk to his betters. No. You see, my daughter, such a long time, they treated us as slaves, as objects. But, well, now they'll go on refusing our rights for as long as they can. Oh. Our struggle will go on for a long while. Oh. Our house. All the same, it was too little for all of us, and when it rained, a roof leaks, so we'll build a new one, even better than the old house. Yeah, yeah. Even though in 1870 Congress voted a law controlling the excesses of the Ku Klux Klan, as a rule they turned a blind eye, and Alaska had just been purchased. The scandal, corruption, and fraud, they stirred much greater emotions in public opinion to say nothing of the influx of immigrants. There's no example in the history of all humanity of such a staggering rise in population as occurred in the United States in the 19th century. Just think of it, population rose from 6 million to 75 million. All right, now move along. Everyone takes his turn here. Ah! 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 All right, baby, would you move along now? Move along now. Get a move, get a move. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you New York. You may now exchange your money for US dollars, uh, confined lodgings, and a place to work. And if any of you wish to go into the interior, you have a legal right to own your own homestead of 160 acres. <laughs> How much is 160 acres? That is about approximately almost 60 hectares. You see, that much, it's enormous. And all that land will be our property forever? Yes, ma'am. All you have to do is work the land for five years and it belongs to you. But these lands are far away. First, you have to get there and bring with you everything you'll need, tools and worked animals. I got a friend I know. He'll help me. I ask him, hey, help me. Me, I got some money. I am good carpenter, useful carpenter. You're always glad to have a carpenter around. As well as an expert seamstress, that's what I am. Borzowski, my name is, also wife. There are three children. We come, all of us, together from Poland. Sure, name O'Reilly, and I come from Ireland with a wife and daughter. My name is Weiss. I got no wife and child, but I'm from Russia. British troop. I have one wife, one child. We are Swedish. place we call Kansas, and you're welcome to settle here if you've a mind to. Now, about 30 miles that way, you find plenty of good land. Thanks. This is the place. Jump off the train. Yeah, hurry. Ah, ah. Oh, it's all right, dear. Uh, Come on, Billy. Here, yeah, Mama. Ah, my dear Hank, look around. Oh, it's all this wonderful land, so much. And pretty soon, 160 acres of it will be ours. These homestead land grants were surely the basis of the vast agricultural development of America. Naturally, some of the land fell into the hands of speculators. But that was child's play compared to the 6,000 hectares granted to the railroads for every kilometer of rail lane. Here, the joining of the Atlantic and Pacific will be achieved quicker and the expansion of the railroads assured. But the 60 million hectare given to the railroad companies amounted to a surface the size of France. Naturally, it was open season for speculation and great fortunes were amassed for the Goulds and the Vanderbilts and many more. The Indian treaties were like so many doormats kicked aside whenever the reservation was in the way of the railroads. 
The Sioux of Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse were as powerless as Geronimo's Apaches. The last Indian uprisings were crushed by the U.S. Army. <laughs> but nothing, not even this, could stop the relentless expansion to the West. And one fine day in 1886, a special gift came from France. At the end of this 19th century, railroad tracks would stretch across the continent 400,000 kilometers. More often, it was one lone track stretching far in the distance to infinity. The rule was to make it as straight as possible. And sometimes this could cause problems. So high, I'm getting dizzy. And comfort was guaranteed. <laughs> it's deplorable to offer such a spectacle to a nice young lady. This would be quite enough to disgust a man for the rest of his days. Soon to come would be the triumph of industrialization. One percent of the population would hold seven-eighths of the country's wealth. Vanderbilt, I already mentioned. Carnegie made his in steel. Rockefeller in oil. J.P. Morgan in high finance and banking. They were to symbolize success, the American dream. But they were also symbols of robber barons, barons of thievery who could dictate the law in a climate of political corruption, with the resulting miserable standard of living for lower classes, badly fed, housed, and clothed. And this after putting in a long working day. One and a half million children under the age of 16 and one-fifth of the female population worked like this for miserable wages. In reaction, the rise of the organized labor movement, the labor unions, with all the resultant conflict and violence, and the price of agricultural products plummeted. Then more trouble. With its foreign policy, the United States was to sample the tempting pleasures of imperialism. Here in Hawaii, and in Cuba. But nothing stands in the way of progress. Alexander Graham Bell invents the telephone, while Thomas Edison was to change everyday life for most people. Inventing the telegraph, the phonograph, the incandescent light bulb, movies, and a thousand other inventions. Opened in 1813, the Brooklyn Bridge, the massive suspension bridge that stayed up. The city of Chicago saw its first skyscraper go up. Philadelphia became a vast metropolis. Now New York is already the biggest city in the world. The immigrants continued to flow into Long Island. Henry Ford starts producing motor cars on an assembly line. With the dawning of the 20th century, a dynamic young man named Theodore Roosevelt was to be elected president of the United States. Before long, the Wright brothers would fly heavier than aircrafts. But this is all contemporary history, and the adventure of space exploration isn't far off. Bordered by two great oceans and two countries, Canada and Mexico, which would never pose a genuine threat of any kind, the United States of America went on developing, growing richer, and more powerful throughout its history, unlike any European country beset by the tides of fortune. At the brink of the 21st century, moving toward the realization of a worldwide community of nations where each for himself has no meaning, this great country must remain, as always, a beacon for brotherhood. That continues on Once upon a time